Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In this video for Elemental Pro, we're going to be taking a look at the latest update and the new widget that's been added. So this is version 1.9 and the new widget is the Media Carousel. Now I'm not going to show you how to create tons of different options with this because there are a lot available. But what I am going to do is I'm going to give you a demonstration of how we can use this to create a video carousel using it with YouTube. So let's take a look at how we can do that right now. Now to start off with, to follow along with this video, you're going to need to make sure that you're using Elementor Pro, the commercial version, to be able to access this new widget. If you don't have the Pro version and you're thinking of getting a copy, please consider using the affiliate links in the description below. It helps support the channel with a small percentage of every sale made. Okay, so let's take a look at how we can use this new carousel widget. I've created a blank page inside WordPress and what I'm going to do now is just open up Elementor and start working with the options that we now have as this new widget. So once this loads up, we take a look on the left hand side, you can see all the normal options. If you've got Pro installed, you're going to see this block of Pro widgets. And if we take a look, we now have the option for Media Carousel. So let's just drag the widget up onto our page and you'll see once we do that, it puts a couple of placeholder images in there and then opens up the new options on the left hand side. So let's expand this out a little. Let's take a look at what options we have available. First of all, we've got the skin that we can choose for the slides. So you can see we've got carousel, slideshow and cover flow. If we choose any of these, you'll see that it'll give us a preview of what they'll look like. And we can choose which one we think is relevant to the design that we're looking to create. For this example, I'm going to use a slideshow because I want to have a large version of the video and then we want to have a couple of thumbnails underneath it, which is a great way of keeping people on your website to look at an entire session of videos, if, especially if you've got something that creates a sort of series. So you see underneath now we've got five different items already set up in there and these equate to what we see on the right hand side of the main area. So if we open these out, you can see we've got various different options available. We can choose the type. We've got the option for image or video. You'll see that when we choose either image or video, we still get the option to choose an image. And that's primarily because when we put a video link in there, it's not going to put any image. It's not going to automatically generate a thumbnail image for that video. So we can choose what we want to place in there. We're going to take a look at that in a bit more detail in a moment. Underneath that, you'll see we've got the video link where we can go through and we can specify the link either from uh, YouTube or from Vimeo. You can take your choice. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab five links. We're going to drop those in there and then we're going to choose a couple of images and I'll show you exactly what it all looks like. Okay, so let's start going through now and populating these different items with the relevant information. So what I've done is I've copied out my links for the videos. So all I'm going to do is come down and paste in the video link and you can see once we do that, it pops up and shows the play button. So it says it knows we're going to put a video in there. Next up, we're going to click to choose an image. and I'm just going to quickly upload the images that I've got set up for each of these videos. And once I've done that, I'm going to go through and choose the one that's relevant. So I'm going to click on this. Obviously, if I was doing this for live, I'd put some alt text in there, but I'm not too bothered for this example. And you can see that drops in the actual thumbnail of this particular video. Now, you'll notice also that the dimensions are slightly wrong, but we can fix that a little bit later. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through the rest of these and I'm going to add in in exactly the same format the links and the thumbnails so we've got everything in place. So I've gone through all five different videos and added those in there and set everything up. So you can see we now have the layout on the right hand side that shows us exactly what this is going to look like. So we can now jump down to the next set of options which allows us to choose some other preset settings that we can go through. So you can see we've got the different effects that we can use. So if we click on any of these, you'll see it animates through and slides through to the relevant sort of thumbnail we click on. We have three options available. We have slide, fade, and cube. And you can see if we choose any of those, we'll have the different effect based upon whatever we choose on there. For this example, I think I'm going to stick with the slide option. I quite like that. And you can see the next option we have is the height. Again, we've got the option to go through and choose different heights based upon the device that we're viewing it on, whether it's a desktop, a tablet, or a mobile. So I'm going to leave this set to the default for just a, a desktop for now. But you can see as I adjust this, I can go through and make sure that everything looks the way I want it to look, that everything is scaled correctly. Next up, we've got the slides per view. You can see you've got the option to go through 1 through to 10. For this example, we'll leave it set at default. You can see then the next option is the ratio. So depending on how our video has been set up, we can choose from 1 to 1, 4 by 3, 16 by 9, and 21 by 9. 
and we can choose whichever we think is relevant for that. So you can see if we change that to 16 by 9, it gives us a much better representation. Whereas if I do one to one, you can see it gives us a different look and crops things off a little bit. So as always, choose whatever fits to the actual thumbnail that you've set up on there to make sure it looks the way you want it to. Finally, we've got additional options, and this allows us to go through and control the actual transition durations, the autoplay, the size of the images, and so on. And we're going to leave that as it is. They're all pretty self-explanatory. You can see we can set up the arrows and all those kinds of things. If you want to turn those off, we can just disable them very quickly and easily. So choose whatever you think is relevant for you. I'm going to leave them at the default for now. Jump over to styles and you can see we can go through and we can adjust things like the space in between each of the slides. And again, we've got the option for mobile, desktop and uh, sort of tablets. We can choose a background color. We can set border sizes, padding, a border radius. So if we take a look at the actual main thumbnail or the main image where the video is, as I adjust that, you can see we set a radius on that. So you can choose that if you want to. We've then got the option to control the actual navigation itself. So where we've got the arrows, we can go through and we can choose the size of those. We can change the color if they don't stand out too well. So you can see we can very quickly and easily customize this to exactly what we want. Same goes for the actual play icon. Again, we can go through and choose a color that we think stands out better. We can choose a size on there if we want to. And we can set any shadows on there. So we've got a lot of control, including the, the sort of color of the shadow, the blur, the horizontal and vertical offsets of that. Let's just turn that off and we'll leave everything as it is, except we just set this back to white because it looks a little better. And then finally, we've got the light box option. So when we click on a video and actually have it to play, we can go through and we can specify exactly what color the overlay is, the UI color, the video width and so on. So this gives us control to make sure it fits in and works with the theme or the design that we've set up. Again, all very, very simple to deal with. And finally, we've got the advanced options where we can go through, we can set margins and pad in. We can go through background options and all the normal things you're kind of used to in the advanced section. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save this out. We're going to jump over to the test site and we're going to take a look at this in action to see exactly what it all looks like. Okay, so there's our new carousel all being set up. You can see that it automatically transitions between each of the different thumbnails we've got for each of the videos. We can click and jump through to any one we want on there and you can see it'll scroll over the way we've set it up. So all the things we configured are all displayed in the way you'd expect them to. If we want to watch a video, we simply click, it'll open it up and it'll give us a nice overview of exactly what's going on with the video. And we can see it, have it all laid out exactly how we want it to view inside the site. We can close it down, we can jump to the next video. All very simple, very easy, and a great way of being able to display your video content or photo content, however you want to use this, I think is a great addition to the latest version of Elementor Pro. So that's how easy it is to start to use the new carousel widget. As you can see, very simple, very easy, very powerful. Well, I hope you found the video on the media carousel useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content that's added every single week. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else we cover on the channel, pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, take care.